With the rise of self-publishing and hybrid publishing, traditional publishing often gets a bad rap these days. And I completely understand why. As someone who used to work in traditional book publishing, I have my own peeves with the industry, and today I'm going to share those with you. I will say that I do still feel strongly that traditional publishing is a viable and great path, and it is still the best way to get your books distributed in major outlets. Outlets. However, I do understand that there are a lot of limitations to traditional publishing and a lot of flaws in the traditional publishing process as someone who has uh, lived and breathed and worked in the industry firsthand. I personally am passionate about helping writers navigate the traditional publishing process, and that's honestly the main reason that I created this channel was to provide that publishing advice and that insight to as many writers as possible. If you're a little bit unclear on what I mean by traditional publishing, check out my video on how to get a book published by a big five house, which walks through step by step on how the process works. So before we dive in, I've alluded to my experience in the industry, and what I mean is that I worked at two of the major publishing houses in the US in their editorial departments, so that's where I'm coming from with these pet peeves that I'm going to go through in the video today. And when I say traditional publishers, I'm talking about the five major publishing houses in the US. Now it is four because Penguin Random House recently acquired Simon & Schuster, and the others are Hachette, HarperCollins, and Macmillan. So let's dive right in. The first thing I hate about the traditional publishing industry is that it's simply old fashioned. So if we look at Random House, which is one of the imprints that I worked at, it was established in 1927, which at this point is almost 100 years ago. So the traditional publishers are still really focused on the process of printing and selling hard copies of books, whether that is a hardcover or a paperback. Of course, now we have ebooks and publishers do sell a lot of ebooks as well, but ultimately the structure of the publishing house itself and the different departments that they have and the different processes that they have in place is based on printing and selling physical books. They really haven't revolutionized their approach in the digital era. From working in the industry, I can tell you that what it felt like was being a part of this really well-oiled machine. It has a certain way of doing things, the process generally works, however, publishing houses can feel not super receptive to change and evolution and adaptation. To give you one anecdote of what I mean by this, I worked with an editor who still printed out hard copies of all of her author's manuscripts, every single draft of all of her author's manuscripts, I should add, and she edited them by hand in red pen and then mailed them physically to the author. So they would get this, you know, big package like this mailed to their doorstep with all of her edits, and then, you know, they would have to cross-reference the physical page with their digital document that they were actually working from. So that is an exception, obviously. Most editors are using digital tools at publishing houses these days, but it just gives you a taste of the types of personalities and the types of processes that are still in play at the major publishers in the US. My second pet peeve with the publishing industry is that it's enigmatic. Most people out there on the street and even most writers who are really interested in the publishing industry just don't have a full picture of how books get published and distributed. I for one know I had no idea until I became familiar with the industry when I was going to college in New York City. And in fact, I didn't even consider book editing a career path for myself at all up until that point. I'm not sure how I thought books got distributed and published, but it didn't occur to me that there were editors and that there were literary agents and all these mechanics that went into the industry. And I certainly didn't know that that was a viable path for myself. To authors, it can be unclear why some books are available in Barnes & Noble or your local bookstore and others are only available on Amazon. And it can be unclear why some authors seem to get paid a lot and others get paid very little. All of these questions around the publishing industry just are very mysterious and the answers are really opaque and hard to find. This can make authors feel that it is impossible possible to achieve their dreams of publishing. So if that sounds like you, I want to be here to tell you that it is possible. Just keep your hopes up. But the main reason I started this channel, as I said before, is to demystify the publishing industry so that it feels accessible to more people because it truly is. However, it is enigmatic, it is mysterious, and it can feel really hard to reach, which is one thing I hate about it. Moving on to the third thing I hate about the traditional publishing industry is that it's becoming monopolized. So 
earlier you heard me reference that Penguin Random House recently acquired Simon & Schuster. With that acquisition, there are really only four major publishing houses in the US, whereas before there were considered to be five. And these four you know, monolith businesses are really responsible for most of the best sellers that you see sold in stores and most of the best sellers that you see on New York Times or USA Today lists. These four publishing houses are becoming bigger and bigger with consolidations. And Penguin Random House is the largest one that's holding the most number of imprints. Now what an imprint is, is it is a subdivision of one of these major publishing houses. So go over to your bookshelf and pick up any book, preferably one that's likely published by a major publisher. Open up to that copyright page and you're not going to just see Penguin Random House or Simon & Schuster listed there. You're also going to see the name of the imprint. It could be Random House, which is an imprint of Penguin Random House, for instance. There are dozens and dozens of imprints that make up each of these publishing houses and each of those imprints has their own personality, it has their own list of books, and it has their own type of genre that they specialize in. And how the publishing industry is becoming consolidated is that smaller publishing houses are then being eaten up and becoming imprints of larger publishing houses. So what does this really mean for writers? Many authors feel like having only four major publishing houses leaves them with fewer options to get their foot in the door. And ultimately what it means is that there are fewer people at the top making sweeping decisions that will affect the entire book industry. So the you know, C-suite executives at the four major publishing houses have a lot of power when it comes to the vast majority of books that are being distributed and sold in the US, which could potentially be problematic. So the fourth thing that I hate about the traditional publishing industry is that it's sequestered. All of the publishing houses I mentioned before and all of the literary agencies that sell books to them are generally based in New York City. What this means is that publishing professionals really have to live and work in New York City, which attracts only a certain demographic and people with the means to support themselves in New York City on a notoriously low publishing salary. Of course, with the COVID-19 pandemic, the publishing houses have become a bit more flexible with work from home policies. However, they are still all headquartered in the city. This means that there's really only a limited type of person who can work in the industry, which then means that perhaps there is a limited number of perspectives that you're really getting at the publishing house. And for authors, the fact that they're all sequestered in New York City just simply means that they may not get to meet their agent or their editor at their publishing house in person unless one of them travels. Personally, whenever I decided to move out of New York City, that unfortunately meant giving up my job in the traditional publishing industry simply because I wasn't able to commute in anymore. And the last thing that I hate about the traditional publishing industry is that it's tough to break into. And I'm sure many of you watching, if you are trying, you know that this is true. This is true for both writers and publishing professionals. It is really hard to get your foot in the door, whether you are someone who wants to become an editor at a publishing house or you're someone who wants to be published by a major publishing house. And for authors specifically, it often means a lot of rejection and even ghosting from literary agents just because of the sheer number of submissions that they get every day. So the fact that it is so tough to break into is part of what makes it such an impressive achievement to become traditionally published. However, it's also one of the biggest cons to going this route. And if you want to hear a little bit more about how I perceive the pros and cons of traditional publishing, I have a video that walks you through each of those, so I'll link that above. But the fact of the matter is that getting published by a major publishing house, it's grueling, it's hard, and it takes a long time. So you really have to have that grit and perseverance. So I know this video was focused on a lot of negativity and the things that I don't like about the publishing industry. However, as I said in the beginning, I do feel passionately about helping writers navigate this process and I do feel strongly that it can be an exciting and incredible and rewarding path. So if you do want to become traditionally published, please don't be discouraged. I just want to offer this perspective so you know exactly what you're getting into and you understand the ins and outs of how it works, including all of the negatives. But I really encourage you to keep your head up and keep trying because it is possible to achieve your publishing dreams no matter how flawed the industry may be. Let me know in the comments below if you're hoping to become traditionally published and if you have any questions at all about the publishing process, drop them there and I will be sure to read through and get back to you with any answers that I might have.
And if you liked this video and found this type of content helpful, head over to my channel where I have a lot of other videos with publishing advice, as well as writing tips geared towards those who are working on book projects. It would mean a lot to me if you liked this video and hit that subscribe button so that you will be notified every time I post one of my new weekly videos. Thanks so much for watching and happy writing.